Hello, and welcome to the Bite Size Theology Podcast. Today, we're starting a new series on each of the 39 books of the Old Testament, starting at the beginning with Genesis and ending with Malachi. Each episode will provide some historical background, the themes of each book, and how each is a key part of the grand redemptive arc of the Bible, which culminates with Jesus in the New Testament. Let's be honest, a lot of us tend to avoid the Old Testament. We know some stories from it, at least the ones that get taught most often in church, but when you get down to it, it's a lot easier to crack open an encouraging letter in the New Testament, read a few verses, and shut it than it is to study the Old Testament. When people make New Year's resolutions to read their Bibles all the way through, chances are something in the Old Testament will stop them dead in their tracks long before they can finish it. Whether it's the chapters and chapters of law in Leviticus, the genealogies, parts that are just straight up weird, or violent, or confusing, and so on. But as much as we habitually avoid the Old Testament, it's an incredibly rich, ancient history of God's relationship with his people. It's what roots the Christian faith into its Jewish history. And the Christian would say what God ultimately brings to fruition in the New Testament through Jesus Christ didn't just happen out of nowhere. It was the culmination of a plan that was set in motion from the very beginning. And through the Old Testament, we learn the basis of God's character, along with his enduring commitment to deliver his people, regardless of their willful disobedience and their continual attempts to rule for themselves. While there are certainly ways to get more granular with it, the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Bible, is essentially broken up into three sections. Another word for the Old Testament is Tanakh in Hebrew, which is actually an acronym that shows how the collection of books is broken up. The T in Tanakh refers to the Torah, or law, and that's your first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These books not only lay the groundwork for how the Jewish people were to live, but more importantly, they demonstrate the character of the one and only God who spun everything into existence, Yahweh and his covenant commitment to his people and deliverance of them out of Egyptian slavery. After those five books, the N in Tanakh refers to Navim, which are the prophets. You've got just about anything pertaining to the Old Testament prophets in this category. The bigger books that fall under this category are Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, and so on. And you've also got 12 books dedicated to the minor prophets, Hosea, Jonah, Joel, Habakkuk, and Malachi, to name a few. The purpose of these books varies quite a bit. There is some rich historical account in these books, some storytelling, prophecy about what's to come, and so on. But essentially these books continue to recount the history of the Hebrew people, continue to demonstrate their inability to obey the law that was given to them by God, and continue to show God's promises of deliverance for them, not only from their captors, but from death itself. These books also point ahead to a Messiah who will come to right what was broken and set free God's people. Finally, the K in Tanakh refers to Ketuvim, or writings. Here is where you'll find the wisdom literature in the Bible, poetry books, and some other history books, Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, and so on, fit into this category. And these books differ a bit because they don't necessarily attempt to recount history, but rather they contain wisdom about how to live in the world, as well as some honest narrative and artistic expression about God and about living wisely. Those are the three categories of the Tanakh, or as Christians call it today, the Old Testament. While there are parts that may be difficult to understand, our hope is that through this series we might be able to provide some context and background to each book that will help you understand each one's purpose in history. So that way, you can read it yourself. And it's well worth reading, because it's in the Old Testament where you come to more fully understand why Jesus coming into human history was such a big deal.